What up, Laker family? It's your boy, DTLF, back with another post-game recap. As the Lakers, unfortunately, fall to the Memphis Grizzlies, uh, what was it, 121, I think, to 109? Let me double check. Yep, 121 to 109. Um, look, very proud of the team's effort, man. Um, very, very proud of this team's effort. I think they played extremely hard, especially Jared Vanderbilt, Anthony Davis, um, Austin Reeves, Lonnie Walker, especially those four. I'm mostly proud of those four. Everybody else could have stepped up a little bit more. I thought Dennis was careless with the basketball. Listen, we had 26 turnovers. That is the mark of poor point guard floor generalship right there because Dennis Shooter is your point guard. He's supposed to be able to control the tempo and organize the team. He did not do that tonight. He had an okay offensive night, but defensively he was trash. He kept falling asleep. Uh, listen, John Moran cooked him. And offensively, he was just okay in too many turnovers, lackadaisical, very lazy by him. Um, Troy Brown should not start. I do think it's Rui Hachimura still. Uh, but shout out to Lonnie, man. He really pitched in with 21 points. Austin Reeves with 17. 28-19 five-block game from Anthony Davis. He definitely deserved the dub, man. He played like the AD we need. Now, here's the, uh, you know, the, the bad part, right? This is the most disheartening part about tonight. We had 26 turnovers. Coach made minimal adjustments, okay? First of all, they lived in the paint. They had 90 points in the paint, damn near, and uh, and they lived in the paint. And we could have really used a seven-footer who can block shots. Hmm, who might that be? Who might that be, right? I think he has his own anthem, his own theme song, and nothing. Nothing. We didn't even get to see Mo Bamba. We didn't get to make the adjustments while Xavier Tillman and uh, Jaron Jackson Jr. and John Morant destroyed us in the paint. Uh, and then on top of that, we didn't call a timeout. We let John Morant have like a 20-point third quarter. Didn't call any timeouts. Didn't make any adjustments. Didn't put Vanderbilt on him till the fourth quarter. Um, Darvin Ham sold this game. Let's be honest. He sold a couple of games this season. This was one of them. He really could have at least tried to put in Mo Bamba to see how it works a couple minutes with AD. You know, to back him up, a lot of times AD would get the block or he would contest the shot, and they would get the offensive rebound because we didn't have enough size. The Memphis Grizzlies, even though they didn't have Steven Adams, have a lot of size in the paint, and they feasted on us in the paint. Again, that's on Darvin Ham for not making adjustments. My boy Mama Mentality said tonight he was lazy past Dennis. So annoying when Dennis plays like this. This is why I've always said he's not a starter. He's a bench player, all right? He gets exposed when he goes up against star guards in the league. He said, get Dennis Schroeder off our team. I'm not going to go that far because, you know what, Randolph? He's had some really good games this season, so I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to forget about the good stuff. But, man, he's not a starter. 26 turnovers, a lot of that attributes to him and, and, and how he played tonight because he's supposed to be our lead guard. So not just Dennis. Darvin Ham was trash, man. He should have tried to use some of his size. Why did we trade for Mo Bamba if we're not going to utilize him, right? That's ridiculous, man. That is ridiculous. But um, but we do play tomorrow. That is the good news. You guys want to hear some more good news that should cheer you up? Here it is. I'm looking around the NBA. The Kings are taking care of the Thunder right now, currently up six by the end of the, the, the start of the fourth quarter. Um, so that's good news. That definitely helps us, even though we lost. Um, the Spurs are currently beating the Jazz, but we saw that movie, how it ended last time. The Pacers are up by 11 on the Mavericks. So some good things are happening to help us out. Hopefully the, the Clippers or the Timberwolves, whoever loses there, and then the Trailblazers or the Warriors, whoever loses there, should help us. That's the good news, that even with this loss, we're still on pace. And then with a win tomorrow, that would take us a long way. But the Thunder losing tonight is huge because we play them tomorrow again, and tomorrow is definitely a must win, definitely. Angie says, turnovers, poor coaching, refs, and shooter, SMH, because this was a winnable game. It truly was, Angie. You're right. And in the first half, we controlled the, the tempo. We only held we held them to, uh, what was it, 46 points? Unfortunately, we had a third quarter from hell where the coach didn't make any adjustments. This is where the coaching comes in. You're absolutely right. The officiating was atrocious. But most importantly, we didn't take care of the basketball. And we talked about having a chance to win tonight. We had to play damn near perfect. We knew Ja was going to come on strong at some point. We knew that Anthony Davis would show up and some of the role players would show up. But the turnovers led to 40 fast break points. It's virtually impossible to win like that. Imagine if we had cut that on half. We would have won because we lost by double digits. But we probably would have won by double digits had we just taken care of the basketball. Again, a lot of that falls on two people, 
Darvin Ham, because his starting lineup was off. I didn't like Troy Brown starting tonight. It didn't work. Would have started Rui. We would have had better chance on the on the glass, I think, in my opinion, at least. We got cooked on the glass, by the way. Um, but, you know, <clears throat> it's one of those games that even though it was very disheartening that we lost it, um, like I said, it could all even out depending on how the NBA scores come out tonight. So maybe we don't even lose leverage on a game. That's the good news. The bad news is we could have jumped up in the standings. Um, the bad news is this was a winnable game. And the bad news is we have an incompetent coach who refuses to make adjustments at the right times to give us the chance, man. No Mo Bamba is really disheartening because we traded for him to have size for games particularly like this one. So don't tell me now you're going to turn around playing versus the Thunder when you needed him more tonight. You see what I mean? So it's just it's just very disheartening to see that our head coach didn't give us the opportunity to win tonight. But again, the good news is that teams that are supposed to be losing are currently losing at the moment. Like I said, Kings are up by four. Now that's a little more of a nail biter. They're up by four on the Thunder. That's huge. Um, you know, Spurs beating the Jazz currently, but it's early in that game. And then the Pacers up at the half, up by 11 at the half versus the Mavericks. So everything, and again, whoever wins between the Trailblazers and Warriors will help us regardless. Same thing between the Flippers and the Timberwolves. It'll help us regardless. So that is the good news, man. Um, the bad news is we have another tough game tomorrow versus the Thunder. And who knows if this guy, um, uh, Shy Gillies Alexander is going to play. However, I definitely like the heart and the hustle, man, by this team tonight. We, we got to get out of the negative. It feels horrible to lose, but we do want to talk about some of the positives, right? Anthony Davis was a monster tonight. I say I wanted 27 and 14. With four blocks, he gave me more than that. He gave me 28, 19, and five blocks. I said I wanted, um, you know, I wanted Austin Reeves and some of the role players to step up. Austin Reeves has been phenomenal since coming back from injury. Same thing with Lonnie Walker, man. He needs some PTE. He dropped 17 points and seven assists. In I'm sorry, seven assists for Austin Reeves. Uh, 21 points um, and four rebounds for Lonnie in limited minutes. He definitely, listen, I don't care whose feelings get hurt, but somebody, I think Troy Brown Jr. is going to have to lose some minutes because Lonnie Walker was sensational tonight, and we need more of that. He even caught some bodies tonight. So, yeah, we need more of Lonnie Walker moving forward. He said, hey, how about starting Reeves and Beasley? I would actually not mind that. However, since we need playmaking, we need D'Angelo back. I would like to start D'Angelo Russell and Austin Reeves, right? And I would also start um, Rui Hachimura at the three and then with Vanderbilt and LeBron. I think that's the perfect lineup till LeBron comes back, for me personally. <clears throat> he said, Dan, Shy was put in health protocols. Was he? I thought it was an ankle. I don't know. I'd have to sec I have to look at that again. But I'll take your word for it for now. Uh, he said team had 26 turnovers. Yeah, we can't do that. A lot of that, though, again, falls in the lap of Dennis Schroeder. He was very lackadaisical. And when your lead guard is la la lackadaisical, man, it it is one of those things that, you know, you, you it's going to be infectious for the rest of the team. But we came out sloppy tonight. No excuses, man. Can't wait to get D-Lo back. But tomorrow, I feel like it is a must win, especially because we're going against the Thunder, somebody we're jockeying for position with, right? Um... Now, we were the underdogs in this game versus the Memphis Grizzlies, obviously. Uh, but we were in there, guys. At one point, we even narrowed it down to four points within four minutes or five minutes left in the in the fourth quarter. So if it was if we would have just been a little bit more, more tight, we would have played the right rotations. We would have had a chance tonight. <clears throat> he said Dennis holds the ball too long. You know what drives me crazy about him is, is how – Sometimes he just like they get him some wide open passes, and instead of shooting, he pump fakes and he settles for a contested two pointer instead of the wide open three point shot. Or he, you know, and then sometimes he kicks it into high gear and he attacks the rim like he should. So you just never know what version of Dennis you're going to get, unfortunately. But tonight I put it more on Darvin Ham because no Mo Bamba, no defensive adjustments in that horrendous third quarter where he gave up 40 plus points, most of those to jaw. Uh, like, how can you be a call yourself a head coach and and, and and just give away the game in the third quarter. Like, come on, man. You should have been calling a timeout every time they scored six points in a row. Like, this dude waited till we went down like double digits before he calls a timeout. Shades of Frank Vogel right there. Uh, Federico says, I feel sorry for AD. He's versus Ja, um, Jay, Clark, and Tillman. Yeah, dude, that was tough, man. He needed some help for sure. And it's like, why trade for a legit seven-footer if you're not going to play him? 
You know, that's on Darwin right there, bro. Like, common sense. A lot of fans were saying, where's Mo Bamba? Where's Mo Bamba? This is a perfect game for him. Seven-footer can block shots. Even if he gets in foul trouble, throw him out there, man. Alter some shots. A lot of those shots, John Moran got the little teardrops. Maybe Mo Bamba could have got to a couple of those and forced Ja to uh, change his game up a little bit. You just never know, but it doesn't hurt to try. What you can't do is allow some somebody to get murdered and keep allowing it to happen with your hands in your pocket. You get paid the big bucks because we expect you to make adjustments. Uh, Darvin Ham tonight he was cooked ham tonight. Um, <clears throat> Bilbo Baggins says, "How does Bamba get no minutes? Ham is awful. I don't. He's against size, man. He has all the size in the world on his roster. I really thought Rui Hachimura was going to start, right? It gives you more size, more rebounding, all of that. Nope. He goes with Troy Brown Jr. Right? He wants two less inches on his six foot." Uh, on his foot long, man, at Subway. That's the type of – Darvin Ham's the type of guy that he goes to Subway, orders a foot long, and he throws away half of the sandwich because he likes them short, right? Like, nah, bro, I don't know what's wrong with Darvin, man. I might have to do another parody video because this dude, seriously, man, I don't know. He didn't. He only saw garbage minutes when the game was over. Like, how? Why not try something different? Bro, you're getting cooked in the paint. At that point, he had given up 70-plus points, and he still didn't try something different. I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know, man. It, it, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous at this point. You got to try something different. You can't allow it, right? Even if he gets into foul trouble or he's undisciplined, you got to try something different, man. And I, I love uh, Wenyan Gabriel, but how the heck you go from not giving him playing time to giving him primary backup playing time? It just makes no sense. No sense at all, right? <clears throat> he said Mo Bamba can at least change the trajectory of their shots. They have no defense in, in the paint the last quarter. Exactly, man. But casuals will tell you otherwise. They'll tell you Mo Bamba can't defend. He's not disciplined. Listen, it's about trying different things. It's about getting creative as a head coach. You don't have LeBron James, so you're lacking one, right? But this is why I've always said I wouldn't mind getting more size on the roster, right, with the 15 roster spot because it forces Darvin Ham to at least, okay, you don't want you don't trust Mo Bamba? Then maybe play Serge Ibaka. Oh, you don't trust, trust Serge Ibaka? Then maybe play somebody else. But you got to try different stuff, man. Uh, he said, how did Ham not call for full court pressure on Morant? That's, and he's also playing a lot of drop defense, man, allowing Morant to get to his sweet spots. Um, let's not mention the officials because, yeah, they were atrocious, but we made no defensive adjustments. Um, Troy Brown was out there just collecting a paycheck tonight because he didn't do much either, man. It is just a culmination of things, and we needed, um, you know, we needed to, to just be a, a little bit more disciplined. 26 turnovers is way too much. But, again, I put that on coach. And on the, the lead guard, which is uh, Dennis Shooter, he said, we haven't had enough time to gel on the miss on the miss calls and the miss calls. To me, it wasn't so much gelling, man, because offensively, we weren't that bad. It's, it's, it's defensively, we're getting cut, especially in that third quarter. And like the lack of timeouts just drives me crazy, man. It just drives me crazy because you know what? Believe it or not, when a player gets hot the way John Moran gets hot, there's not much you can do on it other than maybe put Vanderbilt or Mo Bamba in the paint so they can change the trajectory, right? But what you can do, what, what is in your power as a coach is, okay, he hit two buckets in a row. I don't like the way this is going. Let me call a timeout and stop the momentum. Maybe, you know, he'll cool off on the bench. Sometimes your best defense is timeouts, man, because these players get so hot, right? Especially in today's modern day league where you can't even look at them dirty because that's a flagrant, right? And by the way, the refs weren't calling nothing in our favor. We're getting battered beaten i promise you that jaron jackson dunk which was crazy by the way on anthony davis had it been the other way they would have called an offensive foul i all but guarantee it right but we're over here getting written like horses and stuff it's ridiculous we get no calls all good on to the next one man i look forward to tomorrow's game that's all i can say about that <clears throat> he said the lakers could have beat memphis uh absolutely absolutely we could have beat memphis dan we need to look at the buyout market now. I think so too, Christian. Go out and give us another wing, man, because Troy Brown's not going to cut it. And if you don't trust Rui, get us another wing. He said, Ham doesn't know about coaching. Walker uh, Walker should have more playing time than Brown. Brown misses a lot of shots. I agree. Lonnie Walker is a weapon, and I I've been puzzled that he hasn't gotten too much PT after the trades because he fits in with what we're doing. He's a beast in transition. Dude, dude went off tonight. 21 efficient points, and he put pressure on him. He did make a couple of, you know, 
uh, blunders down the stretch of the game, a couple of turnovers, but so did everybody else, right? Join the join the, the club. Bottom line is you get way more good than bad with Lonnie Walker. Um, can't say the same for Troy, man. He had a horrible game. Usually he's a lot better about it, but he's not really an offensive weapon per se. Can he knock down shots at times? Sure, he could, just like any other you know capable NBA player, but he's not a, a knockdown guy, right? At times he gives you a couple buckets. That's that's you know, once in a blue moon kind of thing. Lonnie Walker, you know he's a bucket. You know when he's feeling healthy, you know he can get you double digits like he did tonight. So yeah, Darvin Ham just needs to get his head out of out of the ham and, and start doing some, you know, to not say something more explicit. So disappointed in Ham, Bamba could have helped big time. Yeah, man. We had Xavier Tillman out here looking like prime Dwight Howard. Nah, bro, you can't have that. Can't have that. Got to throw a big body out there, man. He said, Rui has been underperforming. In my opinion, this is his opportunity. I'm going to tell you what I told fans back then when they were com uh, complaining about Kuzma. Rui should have been starting, but ever since, obviously, we got Vanderbilt, he got displaced. Rui was doing phenomenal things as a starter. It gets really hard for players to, you know, switch roles around, especially when he should really be starting now that LeBron is out. Uh, but you're still coming off the bench playing limited minutes with different combinations. It just discombobulates a young player like Rui Hachimura. I like him a lot. I think he, I think he's been good for us. Um, now, he should start in the absence of LeBron over Troy Brown because he's better in transition. He's better from mid-range. And I think his size will help you more defensively, even though Troy Brown can hold his own at times defensively. Right? <clears throat> my sister what's up tara she said troy brown is uh the average uh salvation army basketball player that's tough <laughs> she got jokes man i love it that is funny though i don't think troy brown's that bad it's just certain players are playing out of their role like troy brown should not start unless lebron is by your side because he gets you wide open shots troy brown can't create himself he cannot create for himself you know who can lonnie walker um austin reeves players like that right so they need to be more in the starting lineup than players who can't create because we're missing one of the best, you know, shot creators in, in, in the history of the NBA in LeBron. So we need to replace that, right? We need to replace that for sure. But you know what? Um, yeah, Troy Brown was bad. He deserves all this slander tonight for sure. Um, definitely. Can we fire Coach Ham? He's not going anywhere, Blake. I at least see another, at least two more seasons from this man, one or two, um, because they paid the big bucks to get him here and he's on a multi-year deal. Four years, I believe. So, yeah, I just it would be weird to see him get fired unless somebody elite became available, right? And then they can maybe demote him to assistant coach. Um, but I just it's gonna have to be a special situation to to foresee that for now. For now, I just root for him to improve because yeah, he makes a lot of knuckleheaded mistakes like not calling timeouts in, in, in a timely manner or you know not playing certain players that definitely deserve to get played, right? Like for example, tonight I could have seen some Max Christie up in there. You know, getting scrappy out by the perimeter. Maybe try him on jaw a little bit. I know he's a rookie, but he's shown some defensive prowess throughout the course of the season, right? So Dan King's up by 10 with five minutes left. You see what I mean? So that's the beauty of the NBA is that there's some balance here. We lose, but it's almost like we didn't even play the game if, if teams like the, the Thunder lose as well, right? The real game will be played tomorrow. So that's huge for us, man. And again, there's still 20 games left. So don't nobody panic. This This right here, I guess you could say it was a scheduled loss to the sense that, yeah, we lost LeBron James. We're playing the number two seeded team in the West, but we've been playing so phenomenal that, of course, we were going to have a shot. Had we not got 26 turnovers, though, um, I think we would have really had a true shot, and it would have been mesmerizing to watch us win tonight. But, hey, it is what it is, man. Night over. We're, we live to fight another day, and, uh, and keep your head up, Laker fan, because, look, let, let's check the scoreboard right now just to confirm. To confirm. Oh, looks like the Spurs are still beating the Jazz at the half by two. Mavericks caught up to the Pacers, unfortunately, but it's still they're still up, so there's still a chance there. And then, uh, yeah, the Kings look like they're about to close off the Thunder. Shout out to the Kings, by the way. They've been closing out some, you know, scummy teams like the Clippers, and uh, you love to see it, right? You absolutely love to see it. Um, so tonight wasn't a total loss, but um, yeah, man, that's what's up. That's that's huge right there. That the Thunder lose as well. That is huge, and there will be other. Nights like these when uh, when the Lakers might not catch the dub, but we also don't catch that much of a loss because other teams are keeping pace with us. So that's the good news, right? He said, it's bad that we didn't get Quinn Snyder as a coach. 
I'm not fully sold on him, man. He couldn't really make anything happen in 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 um, in Utah when he had Donovan Mitchell. So I'm not like fully sold on Quinn Snyder, per se. I've been wanting Mark Jackson for a reason. Ime Yudoka is very, but again, that's a conversation topic for a different video. If it ever happens that they fire him, for now, I'm hoping he improves because I foresee him as the coach of the future. He's had some good nights. He's had more bad nights, if we're being honest. So let's see, man. He said D'Lo needs to come back. Yeah, we desperately miss him. Injuries have plagued us. All the trolls want to come in the chat and say crazy stuff. Listen, we're missing LeBron James. We're missing D'Angelo Russell. That's two out of our five starters, man. So, you know, are you surprised that we lost this game? Because I'm not. I would have been surprised if we won, and I would have been pleasantly surprised, and, and, and I would have been excited. That's why I said 7 out of 10, you know, um, but everything had to go perfect for us to win tonight. It most certainly did not. 26 turnovers is a recipe for disaster. It's almost more surprising we didn't get blown out of this game. We were in it the whole time. Um, and every time they went up double digits, we kept fighting back. So that's kudos to the Lakers in spite of poor officiating injuries and turnovers and poor play from some of our starters, right? So we overcame a lot and still was in the game. So that is a that is definitely a major plus for sure. He said, no disrespect. But you kind of need help from the Clippers tonight. Um, not really. I could care less if they win or lose, to be honest. Uh, I'm low-key rooting for the Timberwolves because I know the Timberwolves are going to lose more games at the end of the day anyway. So, um, yeah, I'm never rooting for the Clippers, bro. Uh, if the Clippers so happen to win, then so be it. But I'm not rooting for them bums. That's for sure. <clears throat> he said LeBron is pushing 38, 40, carrying a young Lakers team. Yep. Sounds about right, but uh, he's currently not here, so we got to look to Anthony Davis now, who, by the way, did a tremendous job. So anybody who thinks otherwise is just an AD hater. If you don't think AD played his heart out tonight, I don't know what to tell you, man. There's not many players that can get you that stat line of 19 rebounds, uh, 28 points, and five blocks. Good luck. The so game was too close for AD not to carry the team. Wait, what? What are you talking about? AD did everything in his power uh, to win this game. This was more on so on, on Dennis Shooter, the coaching, and some of the other rotation players not stepping up. You really got it. You really didn't watch the game. You complained about Anthony Davis on this one. He literally did everything for us to win. He gave us the stat line we needed. He, he was impactful on both ends. I mean, nah, bro. I'm not gonna let I'm not gonna let that low IQ talk slide tonight. That's crazy talk. See, there you go. All right, trolls get trolls straight up get blocked. I'm not even gonna deal with it, man. Look, we got another game to play tomorrow. Bottom line is Lakers fought hard. Coach was kind of a dummy tonight, and uh, and Dennis was Call of Duty Dennis, and that was that's the reason we lost. <clears throat> he said we was getting destroyed in the paint and ham, uh, DNP Mo. That's what I'm saying, Trill. You know what's up now? Now that's somebody you could tell watch the game because that was the real problem right there. The rotations are a problem, man. They continue to be a problem for the, for us Laker fans. You know, it's like this is the first game you didn't play him, by the way, and you chose the wrong game not to play him. You chose this game versus the team with all that size? Come on now. Come on, somebody. <clears throat> he said, Dan, we need the Twin Towers today in the fourth quarter. It would have been nice. Huh? We have not seen Mo Bamba and AD out there together. Now, I get it. For floor spacing purposes, it's bad. But defensively, I think you really would have clogged the lane with those two. Like, good luck just shooting right over both of those. You get past one, you got the other one coming at you. I don't know. I I, I would have tried something different, at least. If we're getting cooked from threes, and so be it. But, man, we gave up 90 points in the paint, y'all. That's where you really lost the game. That plus the turnovers that led, led to uh, transition buckets. He said, uh, Darvin Ham should have put Mo Bamba in the game. Yep. He said, dude, Ham... Ham had Vando on Jackson. Like, what is he thinking? Honestly, I'm surprised we didn't get to see more of Vanderbilt on John Morant, right? And the reason why is because we didn't play uh, Rui Hachimura, so we didn't have that much size. That's, again, a Darvin Ham issue. But if we would have put Rui in there, you could have play, you could have tinkered with putting Vanderbilt on John ja in that third quarter. We He really didn't get to see him much, right? Because what happens is when they call for screens and you switch, the pick and roll now, you got Rui there as well. So you got a lot of size. Ja wouldn't have got easy looks like the way he did versus Troy Brown and Dennis and all these other guys. 
You know what I mean? You got to switch it up, man. Got to mix it up a little bit. He said, that 28-point run got me mad. Ham got to do better. Facts. Way better, man. Way better. This definitely falls. He's the primary culprit tonight. Of course, Dennis chipped in. And Troy Brown was kind of trash tonight. Um, so it, it was a, it's always a team thing. But, yeah, Darvin Ham being the leader on the sideline didn't do his job properly tonight. For sure he did not. <clears throat> Jose said, Lakers should have looked at Dragic. We need a better playmaker off the bench. Shro is too uh, allergic to passing. Schroeder is just so much better off the bench. As a starter, you can never know what you're getting from him consistently, right? And there was even a spurt there where he was going toe-to-toe with Jaw for, like, for a little bit in the third quarter early. But you can't do that because defensively he's getting cooked, right? Um, and eventually you, you you saw him get shed like snakeskin. He said um, Vando should have had Morant all night. Not the final five minutes of the game. I agree that I agree, Divine. Some of these um, defensive uh, ag- or lack of adjustments that Darvin Ham makes are very puzzling, man. It's like we saw what Vanderbilt did with uh, with Luca, but I, I understand that Jaws way quicker and he's a different, it's a different beast, right? Because um, Luca, you you know, it's a lot easier to stay in front of him because he plays slower. Uh, so, you know, with jaw, you really have to make sure you cut off the, the dribble lanes. You have to make sure that you don't overhelp uh, and bring extra uh, defenders because he's going to find somebody to dump it off to or kick it out to the open three-point shooters. But still, man, we could have done a much better job tonight for sure. It's going to it's gonna hurt. This loss hurts for sure. But I'm so glad we play again tomorrow because we have a chance to uh, uh, really impose our, our, our physical presence tomorrow, man. Um I just hope that AD didn't get hurt because there's a couple of plays where he folded like a like a chair and I was scared for him. So I hope he's good, man. He said, uh, Ja get bailed out by the refs, man. It's hard to watch. That's 90% of NBA stars today, man. They really favor offense. That's why you get into 176 to 175 type games, right? Everybody gets to the free throw line easily. That's why I'm not as impressed as everybody else that, you know, especially these youngins. Who think uh, Damian Lillard's seventy-one point game is is close to Kobe's eighty-one point game? Because it's not. Even though it's a ten-point difference, is much more than that. When we're talking about eras, you're talking about earned versus uh, versus given, and the opposition matters as well. But bottom line is, today's modern NBA is tailor-made for the offensive player, and, and guys like Jaw, Luca, um, they feast on this, right? This is they make a killing off of getting to the free throw line. I, I lost count how many times Jaw got to the free throw line tonight, but um. But I'm not as mad, you know, as uh, a lot of people are from Jaw getting to the free throw line versus somebody who's not that physical, like Curry getting to the free throw line, you know, 15 to 20, you know, times a night. And there's really no difference between stars, even though some are more physical than others. That's what's so confusing about this, man. So Lakers play great, totally winnable game. I think LeBron and AD with this squad can compete for uh, a championship this year and next two years. I agree with you, squad, and I think we're going to keep getting better and better, man. I think we're going to keep getting way better. But, you know, I would like for us to stay healthy because only then we can really see the true potential of this team. He said Lakers should get John Wall for speed. (laughs) I'm not sure I want John Wall. The floor spacing is not that great with him either. You know, it's like we just got off of a a poor floor spacer like – like Russell Westbrook, we don't want to go get another one. And I know he can knock down shots at times, but I'd much rather get a big man. Somebody said get Noel. I'd love that. If you don't trust Mo Bamba, use Noel. Get Science and Jabaka. I know he's old and he's injury prone, but I'd love that because tonight would have been a night where you get a big body to help AD out there, man. Whatever the reason is, man, I don't like how Darvin Ham has coached this season as far as not utilizing the size. When we acquired Darvin Ham, we thought he was going to implement a lot of what they did in Milwaukee, and he's done the opposite. He's ran some three to four guard lineups. Very few times has he put out two big men out there at the same time, like two legit big men. Because let's be honest, Vanderbilt's more of a three, right? The way he plays, plays the passing lanes, the way he crashes, he's more of a three, right? We're playing him at the four because that's Darvin Ham's style. I would have much prefer we use a real big at the five, Anthony Davis at the four, and Vanderbilt at the three with LeBron being out. Um, so, but again, it's Darvin Ham's going to be Darvin Ham. This is his 
for some reason, he loves small ball. Even when he has size, he had somebody like Mo. He had Thomas Bryant, who he could have uh, had in the mix with Anthony Davis. And as a result, Thomas Bryant asked for a trade because Darvin Ham loves to play small. Why is this, this happens? I have no clue. Um, you know, it, it makes Anthony Davis more injury prone, in my opinion. Puts more pressure on guys like LeBron to play bigger. And as a result, bang down low more and get injured more. Um, and it makes us less impactful. The only time we have an advantage is when we go up against teams that don't have too much size. Tonight, we got exposed going small, if we're being honest, right? He said, I really uh, thought Mo Bamba was hurt, uh, but he wasn't. I was upset he never played. I know, man. Tough night, but we're going to put this one in the back pocket, Laker fan. We live to fight another day, man. I do appreciate y'all, man, whether we hit 20k tonight or not i appreciate you guys because we're really really close so i do want to say thank you guys for that man um win lose or anything man you guys are always here with your boy uh talking basketball you guys are the real goats so thank you guys man i appreciate y'all that's gonna wrap it up for me real quick shout out the prize picks number one uh you know sports daily fantasy app definitely check them out if you haven't you see the promo code on the screen go ahead and, and hook yourself up with that um Tomorrow, must win, all right? Thank God the Kings took care of, of the Thunder, and thank God other teams are losing as well. Uh, but tomorrow is a must win, just like every other night, right? But I appreciate you guys, man. Uh, you know, don't forget to hit the like button. If you already haven't subscribed, please consider you might be a part of history tonight if we hit 20K. Um, and I will catch you guys tomorrow for that for that pregame, man. We got another – I think it's the final road game, if I'm not mistaken, right? So hopefully we, we, we close out strong. And uh, I'm still very happy with this team, not so much with the coach, uh, but we live to fight another day, all right? Have a great rest of your night, Laker Nation. Peace out.